Muy buenos días para mi compañero Carlos Mairena y este servidor Andrés Cortés. Es motivo de mucho orgullo y mucha emoción estar por primera vez en un evento del ACNI. Le damos gracias a Dios y al ACNI por la oportunidad de estar acá y presentarles nuestro caso de éxito en lo que respecta al despliegue y securización de una infraestructura DNS basada en Genio Linux y software libre para su replicación. Linux and uh, open deployment and securization of the infrastructure of DNS, where we we work with the local government in Costa Rica, specifically in Carincho, in Guanacaste, and uh, we are 577 uh, square kilometers uh, of a natural beauty with wonderful flora and fauna and a great technological potential that gives us the possibility to be here with you. In the last 18 years, <clears throat> we have completed a, a wonderful process of technological uh, development with the Linux uh, and uh, open source uh, tools. Something very important that we want to highlight that as today, we managed to uh, have a 70 <coughs> We have managed to link uh, 70 end users, uh, uh, an achievement that was not uh, obtained by any other uh, actors. At our data center, we receive uh, the municipality, 100% uh, of the virtual servers operate with Linux. In this slide, you can see a brief list of uh, all the range of uh, uh, open source based solutions that we use to provide uh, IT services, ITCs to our ICTs to our external and ex internal users. Using these open source uh, technologies have enabled us to save a lot of money because we don't have to pay the licenses. So we channeled that acquiring. Uh, last generation hardware to provide our users the technological resources efficient and optimal to do their work. Our uh, procurement uh, model has been um, uh, or by leasing. Now we have several contracts, um, communication, printing centers, etc. And the cycle of renewal, renovation has been established with a four-year horizon. So every four year, we are acquiring the best case scenario, the most recent technology. So we have gone from a local government that uh, depended on Linux software, uh, free open source, and now we are the first uh, local government that has adopted a differentiated technology under the principle of technologic neutrality. And we also, well, we opened this with three people from 2016 to 2020. At present, fortunately, the department of uh, the IT department has five workers. So this is to enhance the public value of our services and to improve the organizational management of our municipality and in hand of technology. The projects that we'll share today have been done with a hybrid model where our technical team manages all the servers infrastructure in our data center and we outsource uh, the route of zero for the firework and uh, the uh, signet signing or the DCC. As we are fire people, we don't uh, uh, have uh, the infrastructure to have uh, specialized people updating and uh, configuring everything related to this. So we use a scale economy where a third party, a provider, gives us part of the service that we are not capable of uh, using with our internal technical team. I don't want to miss this opportunity to tell you that anyway, the municipality at present is uh, going through a transition from IPv4 to IPv6, both at uh, LAN con and one connections, and we are configuring our own autonomous system with IPv6 acquired through LACNIC. In the case of IPv4, we had to use a strategy that is leasing the 
addressing of the Internet Registry for Africa because of exhaustion that all of us here know that we are experiencing at present. Before my colleague Carlos gives you the technical details and the demo that we want to give you live, well, we wanted to show you the uh, evolution of DNS in Carrillo. In 2010, we did we deployed all our server DNS uh, infrastructure at LAN and one levels, and we implemented our institutional web server for 2016. Al already with uh, an advanced maturity technologically, we integrated with the banking institutions and the launching of our e-commerce platform for paying. Um, taxes absolutely in line with uh, Visa and MasterCard, uh, debit, credit, private, public banks, national, international. That is, we opened the fan of opportunities so that our contributors could uh, um, wouldn't have to come to our facilities. In 2019, we produced uh, the uh, DNS uh, SEC uh, uh, services, so we improved uh, the uh, cyber security for the electronic transactions through our website. And starting in 2021, we have a robust platform of uh, DNS with functions of from malicious domains, guaranteeing a, a secure access to all uh, the web resources of our internal uh, customers so that the cyber criminals could use uh, techniques such as phishing. Now, my colleague Carlos will go on. Good morning. So, now presenting the uh, solution of our DNS firewall, let's show the, uh, the firewall DNS. Well, uh, in our data centers, um, they, we have an authoritative DNS. The DNS uh, firewall conducts uh, DNS queries to uh, our DNS server, and uh, hence we maintain replic uh, replications of uh, all everything in our internal network. Something that I'd like to hide here highlight here is that no other devices in the internal network uh, sends uh, DNS queries directly to our authoritative DNS, nor do they do it directly to DNS public DNS servers. The solution is executed on three nodes of uh, virtualization managed with GANET uh, and uh, they are in uh, the uh, all this un under open source license. So here we can see that there could be, uh, uh, they could dodge our firewall DNS either in the devices and other servers of DNS, including Google. That's a practice that is used in many other, uh, in other places and homes. We avoid prevent this possibility that the queries may get completed using firewall policy in our firewall gateway and hence the device must be controlled from our technical uh, our technical team can control that these queries are not uh, uh, um, uh, lost. We have two domain repositories that uh, host domains identified as threats. These domains, well, rather these repositories, we have one that comes with all the solution. These are domains or repository, public uh, domains or repositories. We have all the data and we have an internal one that uh, 
through the, uh, the Ministry of Science and Technology in uh, Costa Rica. They provide us information in addition to the information that we collect in our daily work on domains and uh, uh, everything that we can collect, and we feed this repository. So we feed the filter of solution. Later on, we will show you a practical example. Now, let's go on with the DNSSEC solution, also showing these graphics in the data center. We put the DNS uh, hidden mask. The uh, technical team manages this DNS and transfer the domain zone to the platform of DNSSEC members. Self-signing has the cryptography of the elliptic elliptic curve digital signature and the platform is in any cast uh, in 40 points in different parts of the world and distributed distributed in six uh, clouds this gives us resilience against uh, uh, ddos and a high availability to internet users so now i'm going to present the I'm going to show you a practical example, and we also want to highlight that here there are no direct uh, queries to our uh, DNS master. Everything gets solved through the DNSSEC platform. So, all right, this here is closer to the DNS firewall. Here we have an example that we showed this configured with a public DNS. We have a repository. Here you have the repository that is hosted. This is a server This is accessible. And here in the terminal, I'm going to give you a demo. We have several registries, for instance. This is a domain that we have in our internal repository. This is a, a machine that has only the DNS firewall configured. And what we have here, obviously, is a rejection. But when we do queries to a domain, that is not uh, classified as a malignant, we have a resolution. In the case of um, our DNSSEC, well, here I'm going to send a petition. I try to do a petition to Google, but I'm always going through the DNS uh, firewall. For the demo, I made some adjustments to be able to present it, and here I'm uh, re uh, consulting uh, the registries and the DNS registries, and here I would put my DNS registries of our DNSSEC platform. So this would be in a simpler way, and as you can see here, we have a uh, IPv6 because uh, we have a, a deployment of this protocol and everything is going fine and we have control of this. So now in the presentation Com to complete this uh, presentation, we, in finishing, we wanted to see. Well, first of all, we wanted uh, you to know outside to know us outside of Costa Rica, we could put together a technological model based in this case of uh, OS and Linux and open source tools. Many of the solutions that we have implemented are absolutely replicable in any local government in Costa Rica, Central America, Latin America, the Caribbean, any private company 
willing to implement it. Another thing that we wanted to promote is the role uh, that, considering the role uh, that LACNIC plays and the entire internet uh, ecosystem, is we want all the authorities in charge of the IT of technology in the country to promote these solutions so as to improve the position of the uh, um, organizations because we can configure the DNS server and we can leave it there, but we haven't completed our task. Always we have to go. We want to go beyond in our security so that our infrastructures won't be vulnerable to cyber criminals. And finally, the other thing I want to emphasize that the fact of using fully open source technologies to a great extent reduces the cost uh, because we are saving the licenses of property software. So that saves a lot of money that you can invest in our case in a hardware infrastructure, but you can also invest in a number of services consultancies that will increase the value of what we do in the uh, ICTs. And that, uh, quite often, we don't have the resources we want for everything that we want to do, but that's a good strategy to use open sources. And finally, we want to highlight that this project of signing with the DNS Zonza here in Costa Rica, the municipality of Carrillo was the first local government to implement it in 2019 with a technological infrastructure that was absolutely differentiated. It, and this is another thing we wanted to highlight because it's not uh, common to see public agencies or government agencies to work with these technologies. Usually a lot is invested paying for licenses and we want to prove that that's not uh, uh, necessary to invest so much money you we can optimize the use of our resources thank you we have a space for questions for the speakers while uh, somebody comes uh, um, well, well, I we receive questions. I'm going to ask uh, the speaker some questions. Are you still connected? Yes, because uh, we no longer see you. Yes, because could you summarize in just a few phrases what would be the advantage of having a municipality implementing these DNS? Uh, and protected DNS solutions in their facilities because in the LACNIC community, there are many municipalities that could be autonomous systems. They could be applying security measures and IPv6, but they don't consider it something relevant. So from the political point of view, what would be the advantages for a municipality by implementing DNS and DNSSEC? So thank you. So according to our experience where well, we've been working for 18 years, it's not uh, overnight. Initially, we uh, are chose uh, open source to save resources because we couldn't invest 50 million colons uh, paying for licenses. So in view of that, to solve these problems, we uh, started working on this and and after adopting this practice as our model of technological development we saw wonderful outcomes and not only well we because we could enhance the value and the services that services that we provide and that the municipality could improve their security posture vis-a-vis -vis society and the entire world and the services that are administered we know that the municipalities have many weaknesses many flaws but we need a, a very highly committed technical team and of course, we need, we need advisors. We had third parties that have taught us, have given advice implementing these solutions. And today, we are a local government that are present in the internet. We have channels with the nationals here in Costa Rica. We have our e-commerce platform, and only in that platform, we collect more than 2 billion colons a year. 
So what does that mean? That we have improved the taxes we collect, and in doing so, the municipality will have the possibility of investing resources not only to improve the quality of life of citizens, but also improving their infrastructure. We have a data center. That data center has one for the band of UPSs, and we have uh, electric. We, we are aware of our responsibility for IT security, but also in providing continuity to the service, because the municipality at present has concentrated all its infrastructure premise. If uh, we have a, a blackout, well, we, we can't turn all the infrastructure off. No, we have to commit ourselves to uh, making those services highly uh, um, available. So if people wanted to do things online, then they may feel happy of what a local government is doing based on because we've improved uh, the, their quality of life. Thank you. Well, yes, let me add that that type of sol solutions make it possible for the infrastructure of any entity or private company to be able to scale up in a more reliable manner. Because as they start to implement and to create more services, this is a responsibility that also grows. So something as crucial as the DNS resolution and how the traffic or the control, how the network moves, it's very important for a reliable growth or at least a percentage of reliability that the technical team is always aiming at. So that, too, the technological growth that now for all the institutions is very important. If you don't have this type of advantages or solutions, well, if you don't get that, it's very difficult. Thank you. I'd like to add only that we are aware of the problem of the exhaustion of IPv4 addresses, and we know that sooner or later we will have a blockout, a blackout. So we want to have a controlled environment and not doing things all uh, in a hurry. So we've seen what happens in the world of technology and to what extent, and we can. Uh, um, do this uh, as when you are in a group uh, and uh, you, you are told that, that for such and such a day you want and you need to do this because sometimes you don't have uh, the political will. Um, and I want to highlight that in our case, uh, we see commitment not just of the technical uh, people but also the political people that they have been aware they have given us support, uh, giving us the resources we needed for these projects. Thank you for your uh, answer. And here we have a local question. Please be brief. Yes, very quickly. Well, in the world of the private company, say who you are. Simon Perez of the Internet Society, the Panamanian chapter. In the world of private companies, the pr main stopper that I've seen for open source solutions that you are uh, almost uh, free of charge, it's been, it's Compliance with ISO 27000 or uh, it's compliance or bank insurance. How did you solve those inconveniences from the world of the public uh, companies or government? Thank you. Well, in that case, part of what I mentioned of the political support, our leaders trusted us when we uh, proposed that we were going to migrate to this type of infrastructure or technology, and we started. We dared do it. We moved uh, with time, and this has been a process of learning by doing. And But anyway, the group of providers that we met as we uh, hired uh, uh, others have injected a lot of added value, giving their advice and their knowledge. That exchange of information made it possible for us today. It's not that we outsource and we forget about it. No, we outsource to minimize uh, 
our uh, blame spot, uh, our technical team gets involved um, uh, to eradicate that level of dependence with third parties. And um, today, up to today, well, Carlos, uh, well, with Carlos, we worked with all uh, the technical party infrastructure. Now Carlos has joined the team and this was absorbed. This model of work has been absorbed, and today he's the person in charge of all the infrastructure in this open source line. Any further questions? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ugo Diaz of Total Play uh, Communications. I think that it is quite interesting to be able um, in the DNS solutions. And I have a question. What options would we have, for instance, for volumetric attacks, for instance, that DNS cannot solve? Either amplification, uh, uh, what can we impl that we can implement in open source systems? So, the, all this system, the most typical attacks that we know, uh, well, with the end users that are the weakest. If an attacker always thinks uh, um, something to uh, leave uh, the infrastructure, it will depend a lot on the policies that we use. By policies, I mean the culture. We start with the culture and how the technical team enforces the configurations, the resources available. Now, I don't, I'm not aware of what uh, open source tools could make it possible to do volumetric attacks, but we haven't had that experience. We are working rather to replicate that behavior, an attack of that kind, so that we can start seeing what better adapts through our infrastructure, because it's not the same now. We have about 400, 500 uh, 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 machines uh, connected to our network, and that we are worried about that because so we are trying to replicate that behavior and see, first of all, uh, at what level we are working. But so far, open source uh, systems, in my view, we wouldn't have a problem. So the question is very interesting. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Thank you for your presentations, Andres and Carlos. A round of applause for them, please. <laughs>